Yeah, thank you, <laughs> Chair. And, uh, the first issue I'd want to raise, which has already been raised, I'm sure, is that in the farming section of the Independent a couple of days ago, and similar reports also appeared at the end of 21 in the Farmers' Journal in the summer of 21, all highlighting that the methane emissions from dairy cows are probably being overestimated. Now, the study quoted in the Farmers' Journal in 21 claimed that methane emissions from dairy cows are approximately 30% less than the estimated figures used by national organisations. And this should be raising major alarm bells for anyone who is blindly supporting the government's approach to climate action. Now, I did not support the Climate Action Bill for a number of reasons, but this is just another indication to me that the government's climate action policies are relying on very questionable data. How many other climate-related areas have misleading or false numbers associated with emissions that haven't been accepted as true by government agencies or even ministers? We're happy to tax people into oblivion to supposedly fund climate action measures, possibly based on incorrect figures. We have no balanced debate as the state broadcaster. In fact, RTE has explicitly committed to being biased on the issue and having signed up as part of the climate change activist group. The voices of experts who disagree with the approach, are being, uh, the approach being taken and the information being provided are routinely ignored in the debate. In fact, there isn't really a debate at all. It's just constant one-sided activism. We had a Fianna Fáil senator only a couple of weeks ago suggest in the Shannon, and I quote, if we have a referendum in the future on tough measures to deal with climate change, I do not believe it would be appropriate that our national broadcaster should be given 50% of the space in such debates to climate sceptics. Censorship of fair debate is something that seems to be becoming a trend within Fianna Fáil. Such a concerning suggestion just about sums up the government's approach to climate change, attempting to curtail debate and crush dissent even within its own ranks. And there does seem to be a small bit of dissent, however, within the government parties at some of the harebrained ideas being proposed and floated around. The turf issue being the most recent example. Now, it seems to have missed the attention of everybody that the turf ban wouldn't apply to communities of less than 500 people. Therefore, we mustn't have a crisis or a climate crisis in communities of less than 500 people. Nine of the 12 Green Party TDs represent urban constituencies. Now, whilst the other three actually rely significantly on urban votes, there is no significant demand for the Green Agenda in rural Ireland, and yet the policies promoted by the urban-centric Green Party do not seek to address the environmental problems in city areas. They instead just seem to target rural areas. Now, I'm blue in the face, highlighting the folly of expanding Dublin Port, for instance, and I've called numerous times for the port tunnel barrier to be removed to reduce emissions at what is the most problematic area, according to the EPA, and those issues are just ignored. Instead, we have a sacred cow called carbon tax being protected at all costs and increased again at a time when inflation and the cost of living problems are hurting so many people, particularly in rural Ireland. Many farmers across the country are having very different decisions to make. With the costs of fertiliser continuing to pose major problems for farmers trying to keep their head above water. There are a number of other issues which are also of great concern to the farming sector. All types of farmers are under severe pressure with the rise and in input of related costs. And finally, I'd wish to highlight again that a nation, as a nation, we are consistently falling way behind, as you mentioned yourself, Minister, on our tree planting targets. 2020 and 2021 were the worst for 70 years in terms of the numbers planted. Now, obviously, the benefits of planting trees from an environmental point of view would far outweigh the benefits of increasing the carbon tax. There's great urgency and willingness amongst government members to increase carbon taxes every year up until 2030. But it doesn't appear that there's any great urgency or willingness to achieve meaningful solutions such as actually planting more trees. And just on your comment in relation to the problems we had in 2019, I presume that you're referring to, Minister, the judicial review. And the reason we have judicial review is because the government acted unlawfully. That judicial review was successful. And I'd rather that the government would concentrate on the cause of the judicial review as opposed to attack those who take it.